Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced React WordPress Theme Development. In the previous video, we displayed the first page of the blog, blog post. And in today's video, we're going to continue further with the pagination. I think the first thing we should do is we should get that blog page in the menu because we want to show that. So let's go ahead and go to components and then layout and then header and then nav. And inside of the nav, we want to be able to add those links. Okay, so we already got this here. I'm just going to use that. And let's go ahead and paste it after the mapping is done here, which is this place. And this will be a blog. Let's also make sure that we exclude the blog from all of the pages that we are generating because since we are explicitly creating this blog page, we don't want it to be generated dynamically. So if you remember, we had this slug.js where we are dynamically where we are dynamically generating all of the pages that exist in WordPress. And we are also checking that it is not a custom page URI and we should not be including this. So let's go ahead and put this block page over here. Since we are not generating it dynamically, we have already created a page called blog. So inside of blog, we have index.js. So this is, this is a page that we have created on the front end. So we don't want this to be generated dynamically. It's been handled on the front end. Okay, great. So once that is done, uh, and if you go back onto the front end, you will see that we have the block page now and you can click on it and it takes you to the same page, which is brilliant. Next thing we wanna do is basically add the image. So we are going to use the Next.js image for this image component and it's going to be super interesting because Next.js helps us optimize the image. Now, the best part about the Next.js images is that Next.js images are optimized at the request time and not at the build time. So it does not take long time to build unlike Gatsby. And let's take an advantage of that and let's start using the Next.js image component, shall we? Okay, so I'm gonna go to the image. So the first thing we're gonna do is basically, since we will be using uh, a domain that is outside of WordPress, which is the URL will be not the public URL of next year's, it will be coming from a third party, which is the WordPress. So we need to sp specify that inside of the next year's config. All right. So we need the host name for this. So what we're going to do is we'll create const allowed image WordPress domain inside of next year's config. So let's Go ahead and add that. And I think this is super useful because even if you were using Cloudinary, you can take advantage of this because you, you can specify the external domains to make sure that the external URLs can't be abused. And we only allow the URLs that we expect, right? So we go back over here and then on top, we're going to paste this. This is basically saying Give me the allowed image WordPress domain. We just need the domain from that. If you remember, we have the next year's public WordPress site URL. So if you go back to the ENV, we have this next year's public WordPress site URL. So this is the site URL of your WordPress site. In case if you're doing live, maybe it's it's example.com or whatever your um, URL for that site is. And you want to grab hold of the um, host name out of that. So in this case, it's localhost, but in your case, it could be like example or something. So what we do is we just say allowed image WordPress domain, and we just get that information from that URL, the host name basically, and then we just put that information here. So we put that, so we say domains, and then give me the allowed domain, WordPress domain, and then we also want the, so take a look, if I go to the browser, and if I put that here, and we say URL is, let's copy the URL from the ENV, shall we? So go back here, copy this, and paste it here and see what we get. So you see, we get the localhost, right? Which is brilliant. 
and if you were doing like example.com example let's say this was your wordpress site url we get example.com from that right okay great so the next thing we do is we copy this piece of information so that we allow only the domains that we expect to be used onto the front end we say allowed image wordpress your allowed image wordpress domain and then we say wire.placeholder.com because remember that we are using some of the dummy posts and those have the url from the placeholder.com so that also need to be allowed otherwise you know we will face issues okay so now since this is set now you're good here the next thing we'll do is we'll go and grab the image component of next.js so next image here it is so we're going to create a component over here and we call it as image and inside of this we create index.js and then I'm going to just copy this piece of code then I'll explain to you what's going on over here Let's take a look paste it there you go all right so let's see what we're doing over here we also need the constant let's get the constant quickly and then we can continue further so let's close that constants we create another file called constants inside of utils we name it as constants constants.js paste it here and we're just putting the placeholder url over here just as a default image url okay there you go and we also need class names in case if you want to use dynamic class names conditionally and we want the class name to be rendered conditionally so we'll say yarn add class names this is the npm package which is pretty useful so we got that so now we're just pulling image component from the next image and we are creating our own image component uh, and then this accepts props remember this is a custom component it's not the same as the next image component just kind of a wrapper we check if you've got the source url and if show default is false if the source url is not present and we don't even want to show the default image then just return null otherwise uh, you know we can always pull all of this information like all text title width height source url class name uh, layout object fit container class name show default and then the rest of the props now in next yes notice that we don't need the source set because next yes will generate that that's why you won't see source it over here some other properties like there are different types of layouts that are available in next yes so if you take a look next yes layout image and you look for layout so you have fixed the image fix means image dimension won't change as the viewport changes no responsiveness similar to the native image element similar to the native image element intrinsic means image will scale the dimension down for smaller viewports but maintain the original dimension for larger viewports responsive means image will scale the dimension down for smaller viewports and scale up for the larger ones then you have the fill which means image will stretch both width and height to the dimension of the parent and usually paired with object fit so with this approach um, so in this tutorial series we are going with the fill option and all we are doing is we're just checking if the layout the attribute layout value is fill if it's fill then just make sure that the attributes contain alt which will be all text what's been passed or the title of the post as an optional like a fallback all text and then the title of the post as a fallback then you have the source which will be source url if the show default is true if you want to show the default image then we're going to use the default image url which is the placeholder.com url otherwise empty uh, then the layout will be fill because we're passing fill here and then i'm also using the class name as object cover ideally uh, you have this property available as well for some reason it doesn't work for now so unless that is resolved we are using the class name object fit cover uh, so that uh, our image isn't doesn't look shrinked or stretched in an improper way 
And then if a class name is passed, then we just pass that information and the rest of the props. Then we just wrap it with the position relative and the container class name. All right, and then we put the image component, which is your Next.js component. And then we just pass the attributes that we've got, which is our custom ones and then the rest of the props. If that's not the case, if the layout value is not fill, then just get all of the attributes value, except that we won't have the object covered and layout equals fill. And we're just saying image and the attributes, okay? So there are different there are different demos available that you can always check out of this how these things work, right? The difference with going with fill option is that you need to wrap your uh, image with a div and pass the width and the height for that. And then we're just using the prop types. We are passing this information that what data type will these attributes be, and then we are also putting the some of the default values, right? And we are setting the show default to true by default unless explicitly passed from the parent component. So there you go. Congratulations. We have just built an excellent Next.js components. And these are all the links for the information that you want to see about the Next.js image as to what are the different props that are passed over here. Um, you also have some information about the device sizes. So you can check this out. In, so by default, if no configuration is provided, the sizes attribute would include 640, 750, and so on and so forth. So by default, if no configuration is provided, the device sizes value will be 640, 750, and so on. And the image sizes will be these. In case if you want to edit them, you can do that in the Next.js config configuration. Okay, so which is Next.js config.js. All right. Awesome. So since we've got that now, uh, this brings us to a point where we can go ahead and uncomment the image component. So notice that we are passing the width and the height explicitly because we went for the layout fill option. If we you weren't going for that, then there is no requirement of passing the width and the height. Okay. So we're also passing the container class name and we are giving it different width and the height uh, in different screen sizes that's why you say on small it's with 600 pixels and medium it's 400 um, otherwise it's the um, 400 otherwise we are using the width 96 which equals which you can check out what the value of that is okay so that's what's happening here we are ta passing the post we are passing the post title over here which can be used uh, as an alt text if the alt text is not available we're passing the featured image information here so that's where the featured information, featured image information go. So if you go back and check over here, I'm gonna get rid of the excerpt for a moment. We'll just say featured image and then node. And then after that, if you check the fragment, we're just passing the source URL and the alt text, that's it. That's it. Predify, pull it. You can see that you've got source URL and the alt text. Awesome. Cool. So that's what we're passing here. And now we can uncomment this out. And if you go back and check, you have some errors, of course, because we have added some Next.js configuration. Anytime you add a Next.js configuration, you need to restart the development server. So let's stop it and restart the development server. So now it's running. Let's go back. Let's refresh. Okay, we are seeing some issues. NPM run rebuild. NPM rebuild verbose shop and look for errors. Let's do that. Okay, I've run that and then I've run the NPM run dev and apparently this solved the problem. Awesome, great. So now you can see we've got the images. Okay, now these are all lazy loaded images. So now if you go ahead and inspect element to see you can see that Next.js has kind of optimized these images. Awesome. So that way we've got an image component done. And if you inspect element, you'll notice that it has already created the source set for us, right? For different dimensions. For 640, 750, 828, 1080, and so on and so forth. So it's added the source set 
attribute automatically uh, it has also the data source set attribute and then it's got all sort of stuff like decoding async etc and then we have the title of the post as in the alt in case if the alt text is not available great awesome so congratulations we've just used the wordpress images in our Next.js project using the Next.js component. Brilliant. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And please start my repository like all of the beautiful 107 people have. And do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayed. And do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Koritang. All right. I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much.